Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Jermaine Man Sabado here. If you've watched any of my videos, one of the things that I think becomes clear in each of my videos is that my reference to my personal mission statement, which is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And I have a video where I talk about how I came up with that personal mission statement, but it's been something that I've been living with and, and operationalizing since I was about 22 years old. Well, the other thing that I think becomes important when you're looking at any type of mission statement, any type of statement at all, is the question of how do you do it. And I think any, whenever you do anything, you're explaining something, there's always the what does it mean and how do you do it. So today, what I'd like to talk to you about are the guiding principles that I use in my daily life to bring my personal mission statement uh, to life. And these aren't principles that I just, words that I just came up with and that come in and out, but these are really my core set of values. Um, and I've, I've embraced these values uh, long ago and I, I put them into practice daily. So, um, and, and hopefully what this does is, is become the impetus for you to reflect on your own values and, and your own life. And, and perhaps if you haven't thought about intentionally putting some values into how you operate, um, this might be the opportunity to do that. So let's get into it. So the first uh, principle I'd like to talk about that I live by is don't make excuses. Um, we've all faced challenges and, and obstacles. I, I've certainly faced a whole host of them. Uh, many of them I won't share on this channel, but and it's, it's on a regular basis. And it's, it's easy to come up with reasons why. I think whenever something happens, there's always a reason why. And there's always a reason, but there's a difference between a reason and an excuse. Uh, but the, the, the reality is, is that excuses, they don't cause, pro they don't solve problems. They really do more to, to hold us back because, uh, you know, we sometimes we feel the, the temptation to make an excuse because we don't feel good about something that we're doing. Or, and you know, when, I, when I feel the temptation to, to give an excuse, um, I remind myself that, that taking the responsibility for the action is really the first step in, in overcoming the op, uh, whatever the obstacle is. And so instead of focusing on, on why something can't be done, I focus really on ways, uh, ways that it can and reasons that, it's, reasons that it can. Uh, number two, I've, uh, and again, this may sound a little cliche, but um, I, I think we all have an opportunity here is practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes improvement because perfection doesn't exist. Um, you know, I found that striving for perfection, you know, often, in, at least in my experience, leads to frustration and burnout because I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, whenever I record a YouTube video, I always start off about three or four times because I want to get that opening right. And I'm always looking for that right opening. And then I get to the point where I say, the people that are listening to my channel or watching my channel, they're not looking for the perfect sabado with the perfect oration and the perfect answer to perfect problems. They're looking for something that's real and that's genuine and that's going to get to the point and, and help people with some perspective. Um, and the fact is, is that, you know, what's real in this whole thing is the progress because the Perfection is really an illusion. I, I don't think there's anything in the world that that's perfect. But you know, how many times do we come across, or we we and, and please let me know if you if this is you, or how many of us you know face you know type anxiety disorders and things like that because we want things to be perfect. And if we came to the conclusion, or if we can come to the conclusion that everything it doesn't have to be perfect and that perfection doesn't exist and that takes a lot of pressure off of us um, and so every time I, I I practice something you know whether it's a skill or a habit what I realize is that I get better the next time so there's things with my mindset I think I've talked in some of my reflections about uh, you know just my personality and the fact that I want to get things done I want to drive and I want to and I hold people to a high standard and Sometimes it's a standard that's that's unfairly high for them because they're just not built in order to, to meet that expectation. And so one of the things that I practice doing is I practice patience. And every year, one of the things that I do every year is I take a look inside and try to figure out 
what are some things I want to practice this year? And what I find by the end of the year, I'm, I'm in a better place. I'm able to execute them a little bit better. So for example, uh, one year I may say, I want to focus on patience because as a, as a I, I like to think I'm not, but I, I think I am. Uh, I have type A tendencies and I, I like to drive. I like to get things done. I like to get things done right. And so one of my areas is patience. And so when I get into a situation, I start to think to myself, how can I slow down a little bit and exercise some patience? Because the fact is, is the, you know, pushing people too hard does little uh, more than erode the relationship. And, and, and what's, what's funny is the upshot of that is that when I do improve in something, then I have a motivation because I'm doing something maybe five or 10% better than I did before. And when I see the outcome of that, um, that's motivating because I, I see that I can do it. It's, I liken it to somebody who goes, people that go to the gym, you go to the gym, you're lifting weights, the weights are difficult, you can't do them. And some people give up, but those of us that continue to try, then when we can overcome that weight, we get a sense of confidence because we feel stronger. And I think that sense of being stronger transcends the physical world, but I think it's also in the emotional world. Because a lot of times the things that we try to become perfect in emotionally, we don't see those as being possible to overcome because we're saying, you know, that's just who we are. But I'm not saying that we should, any of us should change ourselves because I think we're perfect exactly the way we are. But I think there's things about us that we might want to improve uh, so we can do better and, and just to be a better human being. And so uh, I know for me, when I, when I overcome one of those things or when I get to the end of a conversation that normally I would have just walked away from or shut down from, I feel empowered the next time I get into a situation because that's one more thing that was difficult for me that I was able to overcome. Um, the third principle I, I want to talk about is really the balance between staying present but respecting the past. People that are successful have a tendency to be planners. And, and people that are planners, and I know myself, I'm a planner, and so I tend to be focused in the future. And anybody that talks to me knows that if you give me a situation, I'm not just going to answer based on today's circumstance, but I'm going to look at how different scenarios unfold down the road, which is great. But sometimes it puts me in a spot where there's things that I'm thinking through and I get anxious because I can't control what's going to happen. And the other side of that is there's people that focus on the past. Um, sometimes it's easy to get caught into what's happened in the past. There's things that have happened. I recently had a situation where I went backwards and, and started to speak to people that uh, I, I stopped talking to in the past or that our relationships, we, we went separate ways. And I soon realized why we went our separate ways. And it's not because anybody's a bad person or anything like that, but there were reasons for it and there was no reason to go back there. But, and, and there's, a, there's an individual that I, when I was in college, there's a guy named Randy Fugison who was a professor. And I talk about him in an early vi earlier video. But he was a psychologist, and he was also my speech uh, professor, uh, speech being public speaking professor. And he made a good point. It stuck with me all these years later. Is He said that it's good to have a healthy balance of the future, a healthy balance of the past, because people that focus too far in the future tend to find themselves with anxiety disorders. And he was a psychologist with anxiety disorders. And people that focus too far in the past tend to find themselves uh, dealing with depression types of disorders. And so it's good to have that good balance. And so what I find is for myself, as again, as I continue to practice this, is being present really allows me to experience life today and in the right now. And at the same time, I don't ignore the past. I respect it. I learn from it. And I carry those lessons with me. I, I think, you know, if you look at where I've come from and you look at my upbringing, and you look at the area that I came from, there's a lot that I learned, a lot of how I deal with other people, a lot of how I navigate the world, a lot of what I learned 
came from perspectives that I gained before. But again, I hold on to what I need to hold on to and I really focus on trying to jettison uh, the rest. And again, it's, it's not about focusing wholly on the future or focusing wholly on the past because the future and the past are both important. You learn from the past and you try to make a better future, but you, know, you have to realize you can't control the future. But it's about the balance between you know, living in the moment and honoring where I came from. Um, the, the fourth principle I, li- I try to employ is living within my truth. I, I think it's, it's popularly phrased as keeping it real, but I really mean this in terms of being honest with myself and being honest with others about who I am, what I believe, and what I want from life. Because a lot of us find ourselves in situations where we try to be what we think we're supposed to be. We try to be what we think others want us to be. A lot of times that happens in relationships where one spouse will be what they think their significant other wants to be. And then at some point it creates it creates some frustration. And it really comes down to authenticity and, and staying true to my values and not compromising them for the sake of others. I don't. I do not believe in the concept of situational values. I think it's important to to be honest. I, I I get into the conversation sometimes with my friends where they'll ask me questions about things, and I'll give them honest answers. And sometimes I feel bad because the truth is not a it's not a pleasant truth. But what I start to find is, and my wife and I talked about this one time because I, I thought that I was being too harsh in my analysis of a situation that somebody else had asked me about. And I said, maybe I should change my approach to these and and soften up the reality behind it. And my wife said, is what you're saying true? And my answer was yes. And she said, maybe the people that are coming to you for your perspectives are coming to you because they know you're going to give it to them truthfully. And I, I, I think about that a lot because in my role, uh, as a as a head human resources person, I was a lot of times in situations where I had to advise the CEO of organizations on courses of action. And it's not policy and procedure, but it's just interpersonal stuff and in, in dealing with things. And unfortunately what happens and if you're and if you're a CEO out there or you're somebody that's in a high level position, what happens is when you're the person that has the power in the room, people tend to coalesce around what they think you want to hear. And so you end up not hearing the truth because everybody, I hate to say, I hate to use the term, I hate to use these cliches, but other people become yes men. And so then when something goes awry, the first question you're asking yourself is, why didn't anybody tell me this? Because I think CEOs are no different than anybody else. And I believe I'm no better than anybody. Nobody's any better than me. But the reality is, is most CEOs see themselves as normal people. They want to hear the truth because they want to know what's in front of them in order to make the best decision. And so by me not living within my truth and not giving the honest answer, it puts that person in a situation where they might make a decision that impacts an entire organization that's based on, on bad information. And so that that really codified for me the idea that it's really important to stay within my truth. And so that's what I do. I I try to keep it real 100% of the time. I tell people I have a, it's it's a joke, but not really a joke, is if I care about you enough to answer your question, then it's always going to be the truth. And unfortunately, sometimes that could rub people the wrong way, but the goal is having truth out there because I think, again, if you're dealing with truth, then you're able to, make the right decision for yourself and your family. You may be upset in the short term, but in the long term, everybody else is better off for it. And so living within my truth really gives me a strong sense of who I am, a strong sense of self. And it's really the foundation for all my decisions and actions. Um, and it's, it's, it's played well for me in my personal relationships. It's played well for me in my professional relationships. And it's really helped me gauge in some of the professional relationships that I had that weren't that good because instead of me trying to figure out how do I navigate this hey I'm just going to be myself because I know that within my truth I'm trying to do the right thing not just for myself but for everybody else involved 
And if other people have nefarious intent, that's on them. That's not on me, but I know that I'm living within my truth. Um, And the last one is appreciating the simple things. Um, There, the you know we're always looking for bigger, better, faster, cheaper, and it's 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 easy to overlook those little things. I, I think I had my first, in fact, my first YouTube short, and I encourage you to go and take a look at it. Uh, my first YouTube short, I was sitting in the car outside uh, waiting for my wife to finish an appointment. And I was just looking around at people driving, people talking, people uh, doing what they do outside. And it was beautiful because the reality was I wasn't at work. I was just enjoying what was there because I had never seen and really paid attention to that. And because it's really easy to overlook the small things in life. I I talk about how I get up in the morning and one of the first things I do uh, in the spring and summer, I go out and I harvest vegetables, have a cup of coffee, harvest a couple of vegetables, take a look at my plants, wave at my neighbors, look at the hummingbirds, look at the bees, uh, look at the trees, look at all the plants that I've planted and all of that. And that really makes me happy. Um, the the and it's not the big it's not the big fuzzy animal the big fuzzy golden super thing that creates happiness it's always the little things it's the it's the time that you have a genuine conversation with somebody that you care about it's the time that you see something that you never knew was there it's the simplest things that make you the most happy it's it's not the big things and we focus on the big things because that's what we see but it's the little things that that really count. So whether it's you know a quiet moment of, in nature, you know a conversation with a good friend or my wife, um, you know a cup of coffee. It's there's just it's, sometimes it's hearing a good song. I there's a, I think many of you probably know just from my recitation of lyrics across the channel that I'm a hip hop guy. I mean I'm really a music person, but I listen to a lot of hip hop. And sometimes it's just hearing that one lyric that I hadn't heard in ten years that I think is is phenomenal and and that makes me happy and so um so you know just to to wrap up there's the the principles that I try to live by are number 1 I don't make excuses if I screw up it's like look I screwed up my bad let me see what I can do to fix it uh, number 2 practice doesn't make perfect practice makes uh improvement because perfection doesn't exist and that takes the pressure off of yourself and I know that one's difficult because a lot of us have made our way by being successful in what it is that we do. But trust me, if you're feeling feeling any anxiety, if you're feeling stress about what's going to happen or you ruminate over things you can't control, take away the need to be perfect so you, get, you give license to or agency to the idea that things are just going to be the way they're supposed to be and, and life will feel a lot better for you. Uh, and if you try that, please let me know because it's it works for me. Um, number three, staying present and respecting the past. It's okay to um, look a little bit in the future, and it's but the idea is stay in the present, stay where you are, enjoy the moment. One of the things that's not guaranteed to us is the fact that we're going to take our next breath, and we never know when that time is going to come. And I always have this idea of. I don't ever want to leave anything on the table. And so I want to make sure I stay present. When I when I have the opportunity or the privilege to have a conversation with somebody, I want to be in that conversation with them because that's an opportunity to connect with another human being in a real way. And it makes sense to understand that maybe how my biases might impact or my background may impact or their background may impact the conversation but only to the degree that it creates context for what's happening right now. So, number four, living within my truth. I, again, I, I, I'd say living within my truth slash keeping it real, but just doing the right things for the right reasons and, and knowing who you are and doing being your authentic self with others. And what you'll find is, is you're going to be in a situation where everybody's not going to like you, everybody's not going to agree with you. And I I know that 100% that that's the case with me. But the people that I'm connected to, I never have to worry about what I said. I never have to worry about uh, 
what's the story that I told this person? Where was I? What did I do? How did I handle this? Because at the end of the day, all I have to do is tell the truth because I know in my deepest, hardest of hearts that all I want to do for anybody ever was the right thing. Now, was I always perfect at it? No, but again, there's no such thing as perfection. It's all about improvement. So I've, I, I just, but I, I try to stay within my truth 100% of the time and I don't change that. I don't change that for, uh, for anybody. And lastly, appreciating the the simple things uh you know bobby mcferrin had a song called the simple pleasures and that really sums it up the simple pleasures i enjoy i we we focus on the big stuff people think sabado you're retired you're doing all this big stuff and i say no i wake up in the morning and i go listen to the birds i go smell the 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 plants outside i go and i could see all of the i could, or i'm sorry you could the, the birds, the singing birds will fill up the sky and it's like a rich sound of the birds. I look at the bird, the bird, I mean, it's just, but it's, it's the simple things. And my wife and I, we were just talking about um, going on a vacation. We're going on a vacation in a few months. We're actually going on a cruise to Alaska. And it's, it's, it's really kind of interesting because there's, when you go to Alaska, there's all these things to do. And the thing we said is, if as long as we get a room with a balcony, if we don't feel like going and doing anything, we could just go outside and look. We see the beautiful water. You see the, the glaciers and the wildlife because I enjoy the time that I spend um, with my wife. I enjoy the time that I spend talking to my friends. I enjoy having conversations with you on this channel. I enjoy the conversations that I have when I respond to comments. I, I enjoy those things because the big stuff, you can never guarantee the big stuff, but as long as I have the little things, there's going to be some joy in, in that. And, and so, and, and so these, these five values really help me navigate with purpose. They really help me operate with clarity and they take away a lot of the noise that's in my mind and it and i just everything is smooth it's just it's like ripples in the ocean and it just keeps going so uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap up here um you know i hope these uh resonate with you and maybe inspire you to to think about the principles that guide your own life and breaking it down to a, a simple list and um you know i hope you enjoyed the video uh, please if you like the video you know consider subscribing um and as i mentioned uh and is i have a youtube which is here i also have an instagram channel i also have a tiktok now and i have a facebook and they're all ask sabado and i generally will interact on on either of them and i or any of them and i check them regularly so on that note, uh, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.